So we have much earlier records for Paul's life than for Muhammad's life. Paul was a brilliant scholar. Muhammad was an illiterate 7th century caravan trader. Paul knew the Old Testament backwards and forwards. Muhammad wouldn't know the Old Testament from a phone book. Paul was a contemporary of Jesus. Muhammad was born more than five centuries later in a different country. Paul spoke all of the relevant languages. Muhammad spoke none of the relevant languages. Jesus sent Paul as an apostle, but condemned Muhammad as a false prophet. Paul tested his revelations. Muhammad didn't test his revelations even when Allah told him to. Paul's message and authority were confirmed by Jesus' original apostles. Jesus' original apostles condemned Muhammad's teachings as the teachings of an antichrist. Muhammad's other revelations about historical figures destroy his credibility. Paul's don't. The historical method supports Paul's view of Jesus and refutes Muhammad's view of Jesus. Muhammad's teachings were heavily influenced by paganism. Paul's weren't. Muhammad's message flowed directly from his surroundings and his psychological state. Paul's message required a radical transformation. Muhammad lived a morally reprehensible life. Paul didn't. Paul confessed his sins and repented. Muhammad justified his sins and continued in them. Muhammad's revelations were self-serving. Paul's weren't. Paul's revelations made him a better person. Muhammad's revelations made him a worse person. Paul won converts through peaceful preaching. Muhammad won converts primarily through bribes and threats. Paul endured greater persecution than Muhammad. Muhammad was spiritually disturbed. Paul wasn't. Paul performed miracles. Muhammad didn't. Paul died an honorable death as a martyr. Muhammad died a disgraceful death as a false prophet. The Quran affirms the reliability of Paul, but Paul condemns Muhammad. Muhammad's message self-destructs. Paul's doesn't. Muhammad's message insults Jesus. Paul's message honors Jesus. Muhammad's message insults God. Paul's message honors God. Every possible way we can compare these two men in terms of their reliability, Paul wins. So we're looking for someone to tell us the truth about Jesus. And on the one hand, we have Paul, who may be the most trustworthy human witness of Jesus ever. Other people might be more reliable in particular ways, but when we look at the entire collection of features that make Paul a reliable witness, scholarly training, knowledge of the Old Testament and of various languages, a desire to test his revelations, confirmation by Jesus and his original followers, impenetrable moral fiber, miracles, power over demons, patient endurance in the face of persecution, even to the point of martyrdom. Who's more reliable than the Apostle Paul? Are you starting to understand why Jesus chose Paul as an apostle? On the other hand, we have an illiterate caravan trader from the wrong place at the wrong time who stands condemned by Jesus and by his original apostles and by Paul, who didn't test his revelations, who delivered all sorts of nonsensical revelations about other historical figures, who was influenced by his pagan surroundings and his abnormal psychology, who lived a morally reprehensible life and justified his sins and received self-serving revelations, who won converts primarily through bribes and intimidation, who was spiritually disturbed, admittedly delivering a revelation from Satan and claiming to be a victim of black magic, whose entire message self-destructs because he affirmed books that contradict his own book, whose message insults God, Jesus, and Jesus' apostles, and whose death exposes him as a false prophet according to the standard supplied by his own revelations, show me anyone less reliable than Muhammad if we're having a discussion about Jesus. And yet our Muslim friends insist that when the least reliable person in history tells us about Jesus, and the claims of the least reliable person in history contradict known facts about Jesus, we should put the blame on the most reliable person in history and call him a deceiver so that we can go on believing the claims of the least reliable person in history. This is how Islam forces its adherents to think. To call this a ridiculous methodology would be an insult to all other ridiculous methodologies. 
Paul completely outclasses Muhammad. And guess what, Muslims of the world? Paul's not even our main guy. Jesus is our main guy. Paul, a guy who's not even our main guy, thoroughly embarrasses your only guy. You've only got one guy, Muhammad. You think you've got God and angels and prophets and so on, but it's really just one guy telling you what to believe about everyone else. One guy telling you what to believe about 50 other guys doesn't mean you've got 51 witnesses. It's still just one guy. In Christianity, we don't have to base our beliefs on a single witness. The prophets who came before Jesus confirmed his message. Jesus' disciples confirmed his message. The Father confirmed his message. The Holy Spirit confirmed his message. Angels confirmed his message. We have a cloud of witnesses affirming our beliefs even without Paul. Paul is simply another witness confirming the gospel. And all of our witnesses, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, angels, prophets, apostles, men, women, Jews, Gentiles, everyone is united in affirming the core of the gospel and in condemning Muhammad as the most obvious false prophet in history. But when Christians follow the example of the Apostle Paul, and we show you how many lies you've believed because it never occurred to you to question what your leaders and your parents told you. You get angry at us. You don't get angry at them for filling your heads with nonsense. You get angry at us. And to that I reply in the words of the Apostle Paul, have I now become your enemy? by telling you the truth. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In case you stumbled upon this video while browsing or searching, I wanted to let you know that it's part of a series comparing Paul and Muhammad, and this is the end. So if you'd like to see the full series, be sure to click on the playlist. If you're already in the playlist, congratulations, it looks like you made it to the end. Let me know what you thought of this series in the description box.